Welcome to a series of conferences on contemplative lifestyle. I am Father John Francis Equera, a Carmelite priest belonging to Karnataka, Goa province in India. The theme of our conference today is stages of contemplative prayer. Contemplative life is best explained by St. John of the Cross in and through the metaphor of climbing a mountain. Spiritual life, he says, is like climbing a mountain. The goal of our mystical life is reaching the summit of that mountain where love alone is the guiding principle, where one is totally united with God, who is the ocean of love. Climbing the mountain, as we all know, is not easy. I see three approaches one can hold in one's desire to climb the mountain. The first type of people are those who want to climb the mountain. They, in fact, come to the bottom of the mountain, desiring to climb it, but when they see the steep ascent ahead of them, the thorns and thistles, they feel that this is not meant for them and go away disappointed. The second type of people are those who have a desire to climb, but not ready to go through the hard task ahead. They search instead for some shortcuts or easy ways. But sadly, when nothing is available, they abort their entire plan of climbing and settle for something easy and comfortable. Maybe a walk in the meadow below or a jog in the forest nearby. The third type of people are those who are really determined to climb the mountain. They know the hard task ahead of them, but nothing stops their zeal and fervor. The following reflections are meant for such type of people. St. John of the Cross expresses this inner enthusiasm in his book, The Spiritual Canticle, verse 3. Seeking my love, I will head for the mountains and for water sites. I will not gather flowers, nor fear wild beasts. I will go beyond strong men and frontiers. Spiritual journey is primarily an inner desire of the heart. It begins at the moment of one's conversion. It is a moment where one comes to the realization that the way of life one is leading doesn't take him or her anywhere. And being guided by the inner light of grace, the person decides to venture into a new way of authentic lifestyle. Let us not forget that the conversion of heart is itself a moment of grace. That is the reason I said our God wants us to come to Him and abide in Him more than we want to go and be in His company. The book of Revelation Chapter 3, verse 20, so beautifully puts it when he says, Behold, I come and knock. If you open the door to me, I will come and dine with you and you with me. When we listen to the knocking on the door of our heart and take courage to open the door of our heart to our beloved God who dwells within ourselves, the spiritual life begins. Let me tell you 
at the outset that it is not easy to begin the journey because each one of us are a bundle of accustomed habits. We are turned to a particular way of behaving, mostly depending on our intellectual understanding of things in tune with the worldly standards. In other words, we have created a world around ourselves, a world of security and comfort. Now to begin this new way of life all over again means no more confining oneself to the worldly standards, rather learning to be guided by the inner voice of the spirit and a rigorous discipline of life. That is the reason why St. John of the Cross calls this entire journey a dark night. We will come back to this theme a little later. This entire spiritual journey from the conversion of the heart to the final stage of the spiritual union with the beloved of our heart is divided by the mystics and spiritual guides in two parts. One, active contemplation or dispositional contemplation or some would even call it acquired contemplation although this expression not much used these days. And the second one is passive contemplation or infused contemplation. It is called active because in this prayer one is actively participates. Dispositional because you create a disposition for God to infill you with this love. This is called passive because contemplation is basically a moment of grace given by God to us where we can do nothing but keep ourselves open so that he may fill us. Infused because it is God who infuses into us his love in total communion and oneness. Notwithstanding the variation in accordance with the different schools of spirituality. The active or the dispositional contemplation is further divided in four stages, namely vocal prayers, discursive meditation, affective prayer and prayer of active recollection or prayer of simple regard or it is even called prayer of simplicity. Let me explain further the four stages of prayer. All of us who have been born and brought up in Christian families begin our life in and through the recitation of vocal prayers, maybe beginning with the sign of the cross or the prayer of our father. Even today, by and large, our prayers are confined to vocal prayers, whether they are family prayers or community prayers or prayers of the church, which we call bravery recitation. These prayers are basically founded on the sacred scriptures. The prayers like Our Father, Hail Mary, Psalms are all from the sacred scriptures. It is nice to take time to know their origin. The Psalms, for example, were the hymns composed by the music masters, which were later alluded to the kings of their times. These music masters, who lived their entire life in the Jewish synagogues or temples, were great spiritual giants, who saw in every event of the day and season as the manifestation of God in love. With these deep mystical experiences, whenever they were confronted by social situations like war, death, pest and famine, or coronation of a king, feast at the temple, agricultural feast, sacrifices, they saw the hand of God and composed these psalms 
as a result of their deep mystical experiences. Today, these psalms will become meaningful to us only when we would reach that mystical heights of the psalmist. Let us not forget that Jesus taught his disciples how to pray the prayer of our Father only after spending the entire night in the deep intimacy of his beloved Abba, as it is given to us in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. St. Therese of Avila tells us that prayed properly, even the vocal prayers themselves can be a great source of contemplation. Christian life, as I told you in my previous conference, is nothing but an imitation of Christ. Reading the word of God and meditating on it, therefore, is an integral requirement of spiritual world. In my conference on Lectio Divina, we have reflected on the art of making the word of God our own and how we can live in accordance with the word of God. Let us not spend our time again on the same topic. Rather, proceed further in the understanding the other stages of prayer. When a person gives himself regularly to meditation on one hand and the practice of Christian virtues on the other, with great desire to love God with some efforts, he or she acquires the habit of meditation. Slowly, these meditations take the simple form of just a thought that enkindles within the human heart a great love for God in the form of affections. Affections, therefore, are a sure sign of our spiritual growth and God's reciprocal response. The soul loves to live in this stage for a longer time. Affective prayer or the prayer of the heart is a disposition when one raises one mind and heart in the totality of one's inner serenity and silence. It is here one's thoughts and feelings are transformed as affections towards the Lord. Gradually, the soul is captivated by God's love reaching to stillness, which is called in the mystical parlance, active recollection. Active recollection, therefore, is a dispositional process whereby a person disposes oneself with one's total striving beyond all thinking and feeling. It is called active because it comes as a result of our effort to still our mind from any distractions and recollections because the human faculties are recollected. Indian spiritual gurus called this stage as the stage of Nirmal Stiti or total stillness. It is in this prayer a shift in the awareness takes place taking the person to a naked form of love that begins to manifest gradually. This, in fact, is the right disposition for God to shower his love in our heart. Remember, we are still in the act of statue prayer. Any person of goodwill with one's own effort can reach this stage of let us move on to the second stage of prayer, which is called passive or infused contemplation. The most important stage of contemplation is the stage of passive contemplation. It is called passive because here the person is totally passive. It is called infused because in the passivity of man, God becomes active and infuses into the person's soul 
is unconditional love. This stage is again divided in two parts, namely mystical quiet and mystical union. The mystical quiet stage, which is a semi-passive in nature, is further divided into three stages. They are infused recollection, quiet proper, and sleep of the powers. Let us go quickly into these three stages. Infused recollection is a stage where a person experiences recollection when least expected and without any effort from one's part. It can happen when one is in prayer or when even involved in some activity. They feel that their will is drawn away from them. There may be an initial perfection because of the newness of experience. But slowly, they come to realize that their will is recollected in God. It is here the soul is deeply drawn into God in affections for Him. The second one is experience of the quiet proper. It is essentially the same as infused recollection. But the intensity of being drawn by God unto himself is felt in a deeper level. The two great gifts the Lord gives at this stage are one, the experience of quiet. The soul feels deep within itself, totally quiet, is able to live at the fountain of life in stillness. And the second great gift the Lord gives at this moment is a great delight that is felt in the mind and the heart of the mystic. The gift of joy becomes the inseparate, inseparable nature of the soul, which is experienced not just in the interior faculties of the soul, but also in the external behavior of the person. And the third one is what we call the sleep of the faculties. The sleep of the faculties is a result of this delight in the will. The person experiences a sense of capturing of all faculties, even sometimes disturbing the normal activities of the day. That is the reason it is also called incipient ecstasy. The whole focus is on the what is taking place within oneself. Let us not forget that all these growth in the spiritual life also brings along with it a great growth in the Christian moral virtues. In other words, the growth of the inner person is also a simultaneous growth in the living of the life of a Christian. The final stage of contemplative prayer is mystical union. The mystical union is again subdivided into three stages. Simple union, intense union, and the transforming union. All these three stages for which we will come back in detail study later are the intense moment of the experience of God's love. Simple union takes place at the sanctuary of the spirit but lasts only for a short duration. Whereas intense and spiritual unions, which are also called spiritual betrothal and spiritual marriage, respectively, last intensively for a longer duration. What is most important to note here is the intense transformation that takes place within the human soul. St. Therese of Avila compares the former that is 
the spiritual betrothal to a silk worm and the latter that is transforming formation to a beautifully transformed butterfly. It is in this transforming union the soul is transformed in the likeness of Christ, the new man, the fuller realization of God's dream for humanity. What an ecstasy! What a sublime gift the Lord desires to give each one of us. And what a pathetic stage that we are in. Not even bother to know what it is, forget about practicing it and making it our own. Sin Teresa explains this so beautifully in, the, in her book, The Interior Castle. She says, human soul is like a castle having plenty of rooms, some up, some down, some hither and some thither. In the center of this palace, this castle, is the cell of the king, the beloved. And he is the light of the entire castle or the palace. We, she says, are people who are moving around the castle, preoccupied only what is happening around the castle. Actually, we were supposed to be going within the castle because our actual place is at the center of the castle, in the bridal chamber of the king. Let our prayer therefore be today. Lord, create in us a great desire to be one with you. God bless you.